The next version of a floating AI astronaut assistant is on its way to the International Space Station. Uh, Natalie Gagliardi is here with us for ZDNet to talk a little bit more about this one. Natalie, this is uh, some really cool stuff here. Talk a little bit about this one uh, as an update to the prior version. Right, so this floating assistant um, goes by Simon. And um, Simon 1 was the first iteration um, that launched um, and spent 14 months aboard the International Space Station. Um, it served as an assistant for astronauts as they completed mission duties in space. Um, basically, you know, like other tabletop assistants, it has a synthetic voice and can recognize speech. Um, it was able to understand what the astronauts were saying in context, as well as their intention behind it. Um, so Simon 1 landed back um, to Earth on August 27th. And so Simon 2, is the updated version. This one is actually on board the um, SpaceX freighter right now that's preparing to launch um, Cape Canaveral. Yeah, and this is, uh, you know, obviously, Natalie, very timely, as I know uh, this is, we're, we're right here, they're on the cusp of uh, moving this forward. So talk a little bit about the timeline and also uh, some of the key differences uh, between this one and the updated version now. Right. So um, Simon 2 has basically everything that Simon 1 had, um, the, but the key upgrades include the IBM Tone Analyzer. And so this is the software that's going to be able to make this um, device emotionally intelligent in which it'll be able to understand and respond to the emotions of astronauts. Um, the AI is based on um, a modified version of IBM's Watson. And this is sort of meant to transform Simon from a scientific assistant to an empathetic conversational partner. Yeah, it's really so cool, Natalie. And when you talk about this, the emotional intelligence piece of this, um, you know, talk a little bit about what's so significant about it and also what it means for space travel in the future. Right, so um, I spoke with the lead architect for IBM um, just today, who's on the, um, at the launch site in Cape Canaveral, and he spoke to, you know, some impl implications that this could have. Um, you know, one of them being, he spoke of a, a, uh, something that happens on long-term space travel called group thinking, where people that are confined to a small space over a long period of time will eventually start sharing the same ideas and thinking the same without um, as much objectivity. And so what Simon 2 could eventually bring is the ability to serve as an, um, sort of a balance to that group thinking and sort of help the astronauts think through and suggest different um, you know, outcomes or, or things that they're going to do as part of their mission. Um, and he also spoke to how the, um, he could have um, help astronauts that are in particularly stressful situations as they complete their tasks. So, you know, there's a lot of things as we, you know, look towards Mars and these long-term space trips that, um, you know, we're, they're sort of ramping up in the years to come that having an assistant that can respond and react to these astronauts when they're in these tense situations could be really useful long-term. Um, you know, and also this update, in addition to the, um, to the new um, emotional aspect, it has sort of a barrage of hardware and software upgrades that are supposed to make it navigate better and that the, the software would be more stable so that, you know, overall this device will be able to last and be more um, useful in space. All right, truly fascinating work. Uh, Natalie, thank you so much for that. And if you want to learn more about Simon, that's Simon with the C, and Natalie's full article, make sure you check it out on ZDNet. Thanks for watching.